Welcome back to Soul Moon Rising. I am Jennifer. If this is your first time joining us, welcome. You are already part of the Soul family. Welcome back. So first and foremost, thank you for being here. Today we are going to talk about cleansing your crystals. So those that have been here a while know that I love my crystals. I wear them pretty much every day in many different forms. Um, usually I have bracelets on and today I don't. But you guys need to know how to cleanse them. So a lot of people don't, they'll, they'll go to the crystal store and they don't really know what the next step is. So today we're going to go through that. If this is information that you enjoy, please drop a like. Tell me how you like to cleanse your crystals. Or even if um, you have other suggestions, things that I don't mention in this video, let us know. Let's start a discussion and help each other become better crystal parents. So I have a bunch of different ways to show you today to cleanse your crystals and um, different advice for the different types of crystals. So first and foremost, not all crystals are created equal. They all have different hardness levels when it comes to their actual crystalline structure. So that does come into play when we are cleansing our crystals. So one of the probably most common ways that um, people cleanse their crystals are they put them out on the new or full moon. You just put them in a windowsill. They do not have to be outside. They just have to see the sky. Even if it's overcast and you can't see the moon, set them in the windowsill. They will still get the cleansing and charging energies from the moon that way. That is probably the easiest, um, least invasive way that you can cleanse absolutely any crystal. Um, it's not going to hurt any of them. On the opposite side of that, you can also cleanse with the sun. However, the sun will fade out some crystals. So your darker crystals, like this rhodochrosite here, it could fade in the sunlight. Or even your carnelian, your fire agates, or you know your darker stones. So I would not recommend sun charging for those type of crystals. Now, let's talk about another one of the most common types of cleansing. Now, you may do this already. It's a smudge stick. So this is just a plain white smudge. You can get them um, usually at any crystal store, metaphysical store. Sometimes you can buy them at a drug store, um, depending on the area you're at. Um, I personally like to make my own. This one here is one that I've made. Um, I live in the desert and desert sage grows naturally here. So I can use the local plants and um, some that I've grown myself in my own garden to make my own smudge sticks. So this is very personal to me. It's charged to me for my intentions. Um, this particular one has um, lavender. It's got um, foxbane. It's got uh, peppermint, of course, the um, desert sage here. And I also threw in a little bit of milkweed just for a little added benefit. So smudging is super duper easy, guys. Okay, so this is what you're gonna do. You're gonna take your smudge stick, whichever one you happen to have or prefer, and you're going to light it. Now you only want it to burn for just a minute. Okay, you want a really good, healthy stream of smoke. And then you're just gonna take one of your crystals and run it through the smoke. And that's gonna cleanse and charge with any intentions that you may have put into that smudge stick. So this one here um, with the lavender, it's very calming. So a lot of my crystals get the more calming, soothing type things because I am a healer, so I like my clients to be calm to be able to release the emotions that's it guys that's really it you take your crystal you run it through the smoke and it, it's seriously that simple that's good for any type of crystal another thing that is great for any type of crystal whatsoever is what's car called a charging plate now this one i actually currently have a um crystal grid set up on. But as you can see, if I can get a good picture for you, you have sacred geometry on here. Well, the sacred geometry in and of itself will help to cleanse 
your crystals. Um, this particular plate I made myself with the help of a friend and a Cricut. Um, so if you're crafty, you can do something like that. Otherwise, again, you can get them at a lot of crystal stores or metaphysical stores. I'm sure Amazon probably has them. So, um, you know, you can just do a quick search and find one that you like. Find one that speaks to you because this is all personal to you. The next one, selenite. Selenite can actually cleanse and charge your crystals. So if you don't have, if you need to cleanse right now, it's not next to a new moon, it's not next to a full moon, you don't have any sage. If you have a piece of selenite, all you have to do is take your crystal and feel it. That's it. It only takes a few seconds, okay? So you can do it, um, say, you know, you, you're a crystal healer. You cleanse your crystals, you tap on them. You will feel when it's cleansed, um, so pay attention, okay? And that's it. Grab your next one. Grab your next one. That's it. Now, selenite comes in all kinds of different um, shapes, even colors. Um, so I will show you a few that I have, and this is by no means all the different types. So I've got a standard, just polished wand. Okay, just plain old polished wand. This one is a raw wand. I have a polished and cut wand. This one's kind of fun. And then I have some more um, larger pieces. This one, um, both these are that I'm gonna show you are candle holders. So this one's in the shape of a star. It's kind of decorative. And then the other one here is just a really big chunk. Again, it's a candle holder. However, with the candle holders, what I love to do with these, both of them, I take my eggs or spheres and put them in the candle holder. So one, they're always cleansed and ready to go. And two, it's a great way to store them so they don't roll around and go all over the place. So selenite, super duper duper easy. You can use it with any type of crystal. Now, the next couple that I'm going to show you, um, you do have to be careful with which crystals that you use. This here that I had sitting behind me is a salt plate. All I have is a little bit of salt. Um, now I actually use kosher salt and Himalayan salt, but you can use whatever salt you have or speaks to you. And I sprinkled a little bit of lavender buds on it just because I grow lavender and I enjoy that. So this is just a plate of salt. You can get a charger like this. Um, again, pretty much any craft store. I think I got this one at Hobby Lobby for like two bucks. So you can get them in tons of different colors and make them go with your decor. This particular thing is great for your raw stones. So ones that you may not want to um, like put in water or anything. So I've got a little piece of lapidolite here, um, a mahogany onyx, or excuse me, obsidian, and a sodalite. So they can just sit in the salt and the salt will absorb whatever that is that you don't want in the crystals. And then you can, they can even just live in the salt. And then you can use them whenever you have need for them. Now the next way is similar, but slightly different. So you would actually put the salt in water and dissolve the salt. Now crystals like this Herkimer diamond that I wear, okay, they can go right in the salt water and not be affected at all. Crystals like this rutilated smoky quartz, again, can go right in the water and not have any effect at all. However, you do not want to put anything less than a, I would say a six on the Mohs hardness scale in water, okay? I personally don't like to put any raw stones in water either because you never know, um, unless you're a geologist, of course, and you know these things, what kind of minerals actually go into making each of the crystals, unless you have an awesome book like the stone book that I have up here over on my shelf. So for those things, or for very soft stones, you can do the indirect method. So if you wanna use the plate of salt or a bowl of salt water, you can put the crystals in a container, your soft crystals, 
and then immerse them in the salt or the salt water. So you can use a plain Ziploc baggie. Now I know it's not super fancy, but use what you have, okay? You don't have to go buy anything super fancy. Or I got this little test tube thing at um, a craft store, and I wanna say it was right around a dollar. So not super expensive, and this is awesome because you can just, well, this stone's not gonna fit in it. Anyway, your smaller stones, you can just put them in the jar, close the lid, and then you can immerse them either in the water or you can set them on the salt plate, whichever you're most comfortable with. Again, so your soft stones like this apothelite, do not set them in the salt or put them in salt water because it will damage your stones. Even selenite, okay? Do not put selenite in water. This is a very, very soft stone. You can actually scratch this one with your fingernail. So keep it out of the water. If you're in a really humid area, you may want to um, keep it someplace as dry as possible. So last but not least, a diffuser. Now you're gonna say, what, a diffuser? Yes, an oil diffuser you can use because what do you put in it? Essential oils. And what do our, our essential oils made from? Plants. So you essentially have an oil smudge stick, okay? So this is Clary Sage. You can just put some sage in here diffuse it, run your crystals through it. Any crystal would be totally okay. I wouldn't soak it in there for a long time if you have a soft crystal because this particular diffuser is a water diffuser. Okay, so that means you put a little bit of water in and your oils and it diffuses that way. So you don't wanna damage your oils. So just be mindful of what you're using water with. Okay, so you can use whatever your fancy is. If you use sage, um, you can do lavender, you can do a combination of whatever you might want in a normal smudge. Now, also, don't forget to cleanse things that you wear often, okay? So like my Herkimer Diamond goes on my charging plate or in the plate of salt often. My Malas, okay? So these need to be charged. Be mindful of what they're made of, okay? Obviously these have tassels on them, so I wouldn't want to dunk these in water. These would be safe on my charging plate with the, the flower of life pattern on it. These would probably also be safe on my salt plate. So be mindful, make sure you charge and cleanse everything that you use on a regular basis regularly. That way they don't get tainted by anything in your environment or you know, if you're having a bad day, that bad day doesn't carry over into more bad days because those emotions got attached to your crystals. So be careful if you are at all unsure of how to charge your crystals, you can always Google it or you can always come back to this video. So if this information was helpful to you, please leave me a comment and let me know. Give me a like. If you have not already subscribed and you like this information, please join the Soul Family. We would love to have you. And from my light to yours, guys, namaste.